I take India welcomes all the participants for this uh, regional districts uh, learning seminar series. Uh, today's topic is advanced disease management in uh, CLHIV uh, less than five years of uh, age. And uh, today's speaker is Dr. Pravin Kumar. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Deputy Program uh, Director PCOE uh, CH New Delhi. We welcome you, sir, for today's session and request you to start the session. Okay, thank you very much and uh, welcome everyone uh, to this series of national guidelines for HIV care and treatment. And today as introduced, uh, we will be talking about advanced disease management in children uh, living with HIV less than five years of age. So uh, just to give you uh, a <clears throat> the background why we are talking about this because uh, there are certain uh, common causes major causes of morbidity and mortality uh, which we will try to discuss today and also what is this package of advanced disease management uh, basically aiming to take care of the major causes of morbidity and mortality in clhiv and one of the particular focus will be on treatment of tuberculosis in CLHIV. So uh, as we discussed, this is known as 3.3, uh, uh, which talks about advanced disease management in CLHIV less than five years of age. So as uh, all of us, we know, uh, if we have children less than five years, and if the child is not on ART, uh, so then there is possibility of you no know, severe immune suppression. And that's the reason all children less than five years, if they are not on ART, we should treat them as advanced disease. And most of the time, there is a high mortality in these children unless we take them and, and we manage. Uh, the certain aspect which we are going to discuss today. So uh, this is uh, based on one of the study published in Indian Journal of Pediatrics in 2016. And as you can see here, uh, there are certain conditions where we have very high mortality. And one of them is less than five years of age. As you can see here, 28.2% mortality, whatever reported, was in this age group. If we take into account of all children with advanced WHO clinical staging, then this was 38.6, severely immune suppressed, then 35.2, and severely malnourished, 22.3. So this advanced HIV disease, uh, this will include uh, all newly diagnosed CLHIV is less than five years of age. Or if the child has severe immune suppression following treatment failure. Or we may have a child who has been re-engaged with the care after some treatment interruption. Many a times there is loss to follow up. Or at the same time, we should remember that children older than two years of age if they are already on ART and if they are stable more than one year, then we will not consider them to have advanced disease um, if they are already taking ART and stable. So what are the major causes of morbidity and mortality in this age group? The first is pneumonia, including PCP pneumonia. Then the second, Important cause is tuberculosis. Then we have bloodstream uh, infection like septicemia. There are diarrheal diseases, which uh, again is one of the important cause. And then there is one important contributory contributor uh, to all the morbidity and mortality is severe equipment. So we will try to cover these topics. Uh, no, when removed. So same study which uh, we have shown you, uh, it was also reported that 38% of mortality, whatever happened, 
uh, in children living with HIV, uh, 38% were uh, that were due to pneumonia, including PCP, 28% uh, because of tuberculosis, 20% due to sepsis, and 10% due to diarrhea. So uh, in 2017 guideline, uh, there was um, some guidance and in form of enhanced package for prophylactic diagnostic and therapeutic interventions for those starting ART with advanced HIV disease. And these were mainly based on two trials, which is known as REM START and reality trial. However, one has to take note of this that uh, there were only few children, and those uh, the uh, the children were mainly five between five to seventeen years of age. So uh, we can say that we have limited data, uh, uh, and there is no randomized control trials in children less than five years. So whatever we are going to talk uh, and uh, discuss, this is primarily based on experiences from adult population. So the children uh, should be offered uh, uh, advanced disease package and they should be evaluated for pneumonia, tuberculosis. Uh, they should also be worked up for septicemia, diarrheal diseases, and malnutrition. As I have mentioned, there is no randomized controlled trial. So uh, this is based on whatever best evidence we have at this point of time. And interventions we know uh, is basically, which all of you know, uh, this is screen, treat, optimize, and prevent AIDS in that principle. So what are the conditions uh, we need to screen? Uh, these are tuberculosis, cryptococcal infection, uh, particularly when, when we have to do it, we will discuss. Then again, we have to screen for malnutrition. We have to treat if any of the common you know, causes or uh, uh, this is present during screening or the child has features of these conditions like tuberculosis, severe pneumonia, bacterial uh, infection, cryptococcal meningitis, and severe acute malnutrition as we have discussed. And then we have to optimize, we have to uh, start rapid entry retroviral therapy. And then also we need to counsel them for compliance, uh, adherence to these ART drugs. And then prevent is, uh, we have to uh, prevent bacterial infection and pneumocystis pneumonia by using cotramoxone or prophylaxis, which is recommended in our program. Also, uh, we will discuss TB preventive treatment, then cryptococcal meningitis among adolescents. And there are certain vaccinations which is recommended and we have to ensure that these children are timely immunized uh, with these vaccines, which is mentioned here. So for screening tuberculosis, uh, we already have some guidance algorithm, which we have to use. And particularly in children uh, and adults now, the focus is on rapid molecular diagnosis with NAT, which we can do on induced sputum or gastric aspirate, or if there is any extra pulmonary samples, if it is relevant. The WHO also recommends this uh, which is called TB lamb, but uh, I'm not going to discuss this because this is currently not available. Then cryptococcal infection, particularly more than 10 years, we have to do. Less than 10 years, I will discuss when we have to do it. For malnutrition identification, uh, wait for height. Uh, we use height for age to identify stunting, wait for height for Vesting and severe vesting, and then mid upper arm circumference among children six months to five years. Also, this is one of the criteria which we can use. 
then if we have identified any of them, then we treat, optimize uh, in form of rapid entry, uh, retroviral therapy, uh, I have already mentioned. And then we have to prepare and uh, prepare them for uh, these antiretroviral therapy. Prevention is by uh, use of potamoxazole, TB preventive for children above one year of age. Cryptococcal meningitis, uh, we have to treat with fluconazole uh, uh, in adolescents. Immunization, we have to give as per national immunization schedule. And then also deworming vitamin A and iron supplementation. Another important point, which most of time we are, there is a definite scope of improvement is growth monitoring because how the child is growing, this is also important to know. And this you will be able to know when you are plotting their weight, length or height as per age recommended age guideline. And most of time, if there is some flattening or there is less weight gain or there is less height gain, then one has to find out what is the cause. And these causes may be related to some underlying infections. This may be related to nutritional. Uh, so these are the children who will need counseling and some also work up for ruling out underlying infection. So whenever there is a child, uh, uh, CLHIV coming to uh, our place, one has to first look for uh, you know, uh, certain gender danger sign, which we see. And uh, these gender danger sign uh, are uh, as per IMNCI recommendation. So if the child is not able to drink or breastfeed, this definitely indicates there is a serious underlying problem. And you will have to manage, you will have to hospitalize. Similarly, if the child vomits everything, vomits everything means the child is not able to retain anything. So whatever time you are feeding, the child is vomiting. If the child vomits everything, then again, we have to hospitalize. And this is one of the general danger signs which indicates there is some underlying problem and we will need to work up. Like meningitis, the child may have some uh, liver toxicity due to drug or uh, maybe some opportunistic infection which is causing pain. Similarly, history of convulsion, particularly if they have some illness and if there is history of convulsion during current illness, this also is one of the important pointer towards underlying disease. Again, if the child is lethargic or unconscious, this indicates possibility of severe underlying disease or there is a strider in a calm child. If there is a strider, again, this indicates the child has severe respiratory disease and the child will need you know, management and you will have to hospitalize, try to find out what is the cause of this strider, and then we have to treat. Now the second screening is for identification of children with severity. So now for identification, you have three criteria in children less uh, than five years. So six months to 59 months, we have these, you need to look for edema of both feet. When this edema is due to severe acute malnutrition, this will be pitting type of edema and which will be bilateral. So that's the reason this is both feet. When edema is non-pitting or when it is localized to one feet or one side, then there is a 
other causes you have to think. So this may be cellulitis, there may be some uh, no IV uh, extravasation. So these type of causes you will have to rule out. While if it is pitting type, which is present bilaterally, then there is a problem. Uh, and without a known cause, known cause means like nephrotic syndrome, or maybe the ch child has some congenital heart disease with CHA. In those cases, you will not say severe acute malnutrition. But if you do not have a known cause and the child has edema which is bilateral, then you will say this is due to SAM. Similarly, if the weight for height or length is less than minus three standard deviation, then this indicates severe acute malnutrition. Or if there is mid upper arm circumference less than 115 mm or 11.5 centimeter, then you also, this indicates severe acute malnutrition in children six months to 59 months. So these are and or, you may have two of them, you may have only one. Even if the child has only one, then the child will be severe acute. Now all children with severe acute malnutrition, they, they are not hospitalized. They will definitely need nutritional care but then you do not admit all of them. You admit them if there is some medical complication or the child has poor appetite. Poor appetite means the child is not able to finish therapeutic food, whatever you are given. So that the child is not able to finish, then you say the child has poor appetite. Or in younger children, if the child has breastfeeding problem, so then also you will admit and try to address. So now, as I discussed, the most common cause yeah, which was reported uh, was pneumonia, including PC. So once the child has cough or difficult breathing, what are the clinical signs one should look? The clinical signs which we have to look are fast breathing, whether the child has chest syndrome, whenever you have pulse oximeter, we all have used this during COVID time. And if the child has SpO2 less than 90%, then also this indicates severe pneumonia. And when do we say this, whether the child has fast breathing or not? For infants, two months to 12 months, if the respiratory rate is equal to or more than 50 per minute, then we say this is fast breathing. While children above one year, we say if it is equal to or more than 40 per minute. The second is diarrhea, and particularly in diarrhea cases, they usually have deaths due to dehydration. So if the child has sunken eyes, or if you have tested skin pains, if it is going back very slowly, and also there are two also signs like uh, the child is not able to no child is lethargic and conscious and the child is drinking poorly if we have two or more then we classify them as severe and how do we check for skin pinch or also we say this skin turgor for that you will select a point on anterior abdominal wall which most of time you will be doing midway between umbilicus and lateral wall of abdomen. Midway, you will lift the skin fold and leave it. If a skin pinch go back, is taking longer than two seconds, then you say this is very slow. If there is a tent formation, but it goes back within two seconds, then we say this is slow. 
And then if it is going immediately, then we say this is immediately. So if the child has two or more of these four, then we say this is immediate. The next common problem, which is fever, if the child has fever, then this indicates there is some form of infection. This may be viral, this may be bacterial, or this may be fungal. So one has to identify, but definitely if there is a fever which is lasting, and uh, if it is more than 37.5, so then we have to look for the cause. How do we identify meningitis? So in younger children, we look for stiff neck, or in infants, we also look for bulging in tenure. Whenever we are looking for bulging anterior, uh, anterior frontenil, then we have to remember that we have to examine an upright position uh, uh, and the child should not cry. If you have examined upright position and that time also there is a feeling of bulging front, then you will take this as one of the evidence of raised intracranial tension and possibility of meningitis. I think this I have already discussed in previous slide. This is just repetition, screening for severe acute malnutrition. What are the problems which will need? So if you have a child who is fulfilling the criteria case definition of severe acute malnutrition and has in any of these three problems, then you will So just to summarize what all we discussed, the algorithm which we are talking, all CLHIV less than five years with newly diagnosed HIV infection, or those re-entering care after treatment interruption, here there are there is a need to screen. So what are what are these? We have to screen for tuberculosis, and this we do further assessment if the child has any of them. Like if the child has cough at that particular time, the child has history of fever, or there is a poor weight gain, or there is a reported weight loss. There is history of contact with tuberculosis. If any of them, then we will do chest X-ray. We will also take sample for NAC sputum or induced sputum or gastric lavage. This one is not available, so we will not be able to do that. Also, we need to uh, examine, and most of the time this will be done by medical officer because this is our medical assessment. We have to look for general danger sign, which I have already discussed, whether the child is not able to drink or breastfeed, vomits everything, convulsion, lethargy or unconsciousness. And also there is a strider in a calm child. So for this, we need to look for certain examination finding. And these are fast breathing, chest in drawing, whether the child has sunken eyes or skin pinks go back slowly or very slowly, whether the child has fever, stiff neck or bulging fountain. If the child has any of them, then we have to refer the patient for further management for these conditions which you have identified. If it is not there, then you will examine further and that you will look for severe acute malnutrition, whether the child will need hospitalization, and if the child has some medical complication or poor appetite, so then you will send for hospitalization or refer to a higher center where these children may be managed. So if the child is less than five years with any of these conditions, or there is a advanced clinical condition, stage three or four, or if there is a CD4 count, which is less than 200, or there is unsuppressed viral load, then we will 
मैनेज देम एज पर एडवांस डिजीज मैनेजमेंट पैकेज सो इन दिस मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स आर सिमिलर टू स्टैंडर्ड पैकेज वेयर यू डू नॉट हैव एविडेंस ऑफ एडवांस और देर इज यू डू नॉट हैव एनी डिजीज और मॉर्बिडिटी बट सेम टाइम in this particularly advanced disease management package you have to make sure that you are able to start art rapidly at the earliest rest of the plate uh, the management is almost similar to what you will give in even if they are not fulfilling the criteria for advanced disease management you will need to treat and stabilize any opportunistic infection which they have or severe severe acute malnutrition you have to initiate co tamoxifen prophylaxis you have to prepare you have to do preparedness counseling for art and nutrition you have to start art then you also have to consider a uh, tb prophylaxis if the uh, child is above one year of age and you have to immunize as per national immunization schedule and then we have to follow as per our art guide now the next is that we have to look for tuberculosis right so the tuberculosis we usually do this screening by looking for four clinical signs and symptoms and these are current cough whether their child has fever whether there is any weight loss and whether there is any history of contact with tuberculosis so if the if you have any of them then we have to investigate for tuberculosis and if it is not then we have to look for whether the child is fulfilling the criteria or there is contraindication for isoniazide prophylaxis therapy <laughs> but if the child has any of these four then we have to investigate if the child has tuberculosis we will have to treat for tuberculosis if it is not then we have to consider for ipt and if there is a other diagnosis you have found then also you have to treat that diagnosis or condition and consider ipt if there is no contraindication so we all of us we know uh, the tuberculosis we can have pulmonary tb or we may have extra pulmonary tb most of time pulmonary tb patients they will present with fever cough poor weight gain or weight loss more than 5% of the body weight or there is no weight gain in last past 3 months or there is a contact with the tuberculosis is and this we take usually within last 2 years while extra pulmonary tuberculosis most of time these usually present in form of lymph node enlargement the child may have cns tuberculosis and most of time these patients they will present with headache confusion etc if they have bone tuberculosis they may present with joint pain spinal deformity backache the older patients or older children they also may complain of back pain chest pain tightness of chest respiratory distress they may have pleural effusion pericardial effusion abdominal pain also is one of the manifestation particularly for abdominal tuberculosis if they have particularly peritoneal so in these cases we have to look and work up for extra pulmonary so what are the diagnostic tool which is available uh, the most important and now uh, the revised guideline there is a lot of stress to screen with chest x ray and if we have the chest x ray suggestive of tuberculosis 
then we have to send sputum gastric aspirate, gastric lavar, induced sputum. Wherever there is a pot available, one can also go for bronchoalveolar lavar. And we send it for NAT. Okay. It's not CV NAT, any NAT which we uh, send. Most of the time, older children more than six years, they will be able to produce sputum. But younger children, and particularly less than six years, most of the time they are not able to. And in these cases, we will have to take gastric aspirate, where we take two early morning sample through nasogastric tube, and we collect gastric aspirate. The idea is most of the time these children they will swallow, and so. This will be lying there in a stomach. And when you take the sample and you do uh, examination uh, uh, for acid pass bacilli or NAT you do, then you will be able to identify. Tuberculine test uh, or Montu test was one of the uh, adjunct tool which we were using for a long time. However, uh, now maybe uh, coming time, this will not be recommended. Um, in recent guidelines, they have removed this. Then uh, you also need to do ultrasonography uh, when you have possibility of abdominal tuberculosis. FNSC we do for uh, lymph node uh, tuberculosis. And uh, when we have cytology, we do for acid fast bacilli. Also, CV9 may be sent from uh, whatever the sample we have collected. And neuroimaging uh, in form of CT, uh, CECT, we do for CNS tuberculosis. Regarding cryptococcal disease, uh, the main difference in the package of care for children compared to if we talk about adolescent and adult is that routine cryptococcal antigen screening and Primitive therapy, uh, which is usually recommended for more than 10 years, is not recommended in children less than 10 years. However, if the child is less than 10 years and if he presents with sign and symptom of meningitis, then we have to consider an appropriate investigation and treatment should be done in these cases. Regarding screening for malnutrition, uh, we have to remember that uh, severe and acute malnutrition or malnutrition is a common problem in HIV. And so it's very important that we uh, identify, assess child for presence or absence of malnutrition. And for that, we will need to do certain anthropometric assessment. And these anthropometric assessment we will do and identify. Now coming to treatment, what treatment is there for CLHIV? Uh, it's recommended to put them on daily drug doses. If you are giving, then you will use 10 milligram per kg of this, the maximum dose for INH is 300. Or if Humpy saying you will give 15 milligram per kg in the range of 10 to 20, the maximum dose is 600. For ethambutol 20, 15 to 20 is the range, 1500 is the maximum dose, and pyrazinamide 35 is the maximum dose of this. So we do have now uh, these fixed dose combinations available in our. Uh, this national tuberculosis elimination program or dot center through dot center and uh, which you can link and use. Uh, we have different bait band and uh, for each bait band, how much HRJ, how many and ethambutol uh, intensive phase, continuous continuation phase. So we have to follow and give treatment as it is mentioned. Now there are uh, certain other uh, you know, important points which uh, we have to also uh, remember that uh, if there is TB co-infection in CLHIV, then 
there are certain uh, important point which all of you follow. So if the weight is less than 20 kg or age is below six, then most of time uh, you will be putting them on uh, this fixed dose combination of febecavir lamivudine twice a day as per weight man. And then um, you will also use lopinavir and supervisting with additional uh, ritonavir twice daily as per weight man. For 20 to 30 kg, and if the child is more than six, then this DTG uh, will come and you will give long with febecavir lamivudine. If it is above 30 kg and more than 10 years, then uh, this tenofovir you are using in combination of uh, DTG and lamivudine. So if the child is on protease uh, PI-based ART, uh, then uh, there are certain changes which you have to follow and rifampicin, uh, as you know, rifampicin usually suppresses viability of these drugs. So uh, rifabutin, which is an effective anti-TV also. So they usually uh, do not inhibit effectiveness of these drugs. However, if it is not available in FTC, and so we have to give them separately. So here you will substitute rifampicin with uh, rifabutin daily for the entire duration of anti-TB treatment. And uh, we also have to remember that we have to start uh, anti-tuberculosis treatment as soon as TB is diagnosed, even if the patient is on PI-based ART. So if substitution of rifampicin with rifampicin cannot be done immediately, one should consider super boosting of PI uh, PIs uh, uh, that is recommended and uh, that you should do. So uh, wherever available, then we have to replace rifampicin with rifabutin as per recommendation. And if rifampicin is continued for longer duration, if it is rifabutin is not available, uh, then uh, we we will have to uh, know, uh, take care and we will have to um, make uh, know, we we have to try to arrange this because otherwise there is a possibility of drug resistant mutants so that's the reason tb treatment in uh, children living with hiv on protease protease inhibitor based art it is usually recommended that uh, super boosting of lopinavir with ritonavir is recommended. And uh, this is the ratio of one is to one. And if age is more than six years and weight is uh, 20 kg, then I have already discussed in this case, DTG may be used twice daily dose. Now, uh, this is not directly related because primarily we are talking about children, but then uh, most of the ART center, you are providing care to also to adults. So we have to remember that most NTTV HRJE, they are safe during pregnancy and lactation, but they are second line NTTV drugs. Uh, many of them, they are contraindicated. One has to remember that we do not have to use amikacin or streptomycin during pregnancy because of the risk of eighth cranial nerve damage. Similarly, fluoroquinolones, uh, there are risk of cartilage damage. Ethinomide is contraindicated during first 32 weeks of pregnancy due to teratogenic effect. And also, uh, um, these newer drugs are also not safe. So one has to remember that we do not have to use them. So then, how to optimize and prevent? So as I discussed, all uh, children with advanced disease, we have to make sure that there is a rapid ART initiation most of the time. We have to make sure that this is done within seven days of diagnosis. This is the priority. 
but children same time many of them they may not be clinically stable in those cases you have to stabilize them first like if the child has severe acute malnutrition tuberculosis or meningitis then we have to stabilize them first initiating art is encouraged uh, and uh, we should do this during the child is during the time the child is admitted in our hospital we should make sure that we initiate art and also we have to ensure linkages to the facility in which the child will receive ongoing hiv care on discharge because many of these hospitals where we do not have art center link then we will have to make arrangement and link then also i talk, uh, discussed that we have to make sure that the child is put on cotamoxazole prophylaxis and as per recommendation all hip exposed infants and children from 6 weeks of age we have to start this and this should be done till the time hiv infection has been reliably excluded by a negative antibody test at 18 months regardless of arv initiation this was regarding the hiv exposed infants and children but when we have a already hiv in infected infant and children up to 5 years then we have to regardless of their who stage or cd4 count we have to give them cotamoxazole prophylaxis and this we will continue uh, till the child is more than 5 years of age with a who stage of 1 or 2 and cd4 count more than 350 on two occasions which you have done twice you have done and these twice are should be at least interval of 6 months similarly all hiv infected children more than 5 years if they have a stage 3 or a stage 4 then regardless of cd4 count we have to put them on cotamoxazole prophylaxis and we have to continue till the time the clinical stage is moved to stage 1 or 2 and cd4 count is more than 350 on two occasions which you have done not less than 6 months apart as secondary prophylaxis we have to do uh, particularly for pcp pneumonia so then we do not have to stop and more than 5 years we have to continue till the time the who treat stage 1 and 2 is achieved for children we uh, have recommendation uh, uh, according to baseline how much cotamoxazole prophylaxis we have to give so this is usually given in the dose of 5 mg per kg orally once daily that is what you give you can use this baseline which is available in your art centers and we also have to give counseling to the family that cotamoxazole although this will not treat or cure hiv infection but then it's very important to prevent infection and morbidities in these children we will also need to give information regarding the side effects of these cotamoxazole prophylaxis and to report if the child develops any of them like steven johnson syndrome skin rash severe liver disease severe anemia severe spine cytopenia uh, so we have to look for those things and then we have to continue now coming to uh, tuberculosis uh, prophylaxis for tuberculosis so as we have discussed all clhiv who are more than 12 months of age and who are four s negative the four symptom which be evaluated so they are unlikely to have active tuberculosis 
but if the child is living with a person with tb or who are unlikely to have active tb on appropriate clinical evaluation then we have to put the on ipt but at the same time we have to make sure that we have excluded possibility of active tb tuberculosis tb disease IPT is contraindicated when there is active hepatitis or there are signs and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. If there is a some hepatotoxic medications you are giving, so in those cases also we have to be very careful. If there is already a contact with multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, then we have to uh, again, this is contraindication. And uh, we, uh, how much we have to use. And again, this is according to weight man uh, for 100 milligram tablet of INS to be administered. If it is less than 5 kg, we give half. If it is 5.1 to 9, then one tablet. And similarly, we will increase as per dose. So that is the recommended, uh, this isoniazide uh, prophylaxis therapy for infants who are more than six uh, infants, uh, children who are more than 12 months of age and where we do not have a possibility of active tuberculosis and we do not have a contraindication for injurious. So I think this was all and uh, this is the information that we have next RDLS session on care of CNHIV post ART initiation, which you have on 1st March. Thank you, sir, uh, for this wonderful session. Uh, participants are requested if uh, you have any question, please unmute their mic and ask the question. I think there is a no question, sir. Uh, we, I will quickly run the feedback form. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Participants are requested, please uh, fill that uh, feedback uh, form. Cool. Uh, thank you all participants to uh, attending the session. Uh, uh, sir, I think there is a no, no question. Uh, sir, can we conclude the session now?
yeah yeah okay thank sir you so thank, much. Uh, thank you sir thank you all